Hi everyone, my name's Tina and this is Tiash. We work at the Griffith Institute for Drug Discovery. And today we want to talk to you about a neglected but fascinating protozoan parasite, Giardia duodenalis, otherwise known as Giardia lamblia or Giardia intestinalis. Yes, Giardia parasites are fascinating little creatures that infect the gastrointestinal tract of a range of animals, including domestic pets and humans. They have reasonably a simple life cycle compared to other parasites with only two stages of development. The very environmentally stable cyst, which we can accidentally digest when we consume the contaminated food or water or have not washed our hands properly, and the trophozoid, which develops inside us once we ingested the cyst. Trophozoids grow within our intestine, adhere the line of the gastrointestinal tract, and that's the stage that caused the disease. Giardia parasites infect billions of people around the globe. And while infections are usually asymptomatic, so people don't have any symptoms, an estimated 200 million people develop disease, or what we call geodiasis, every year. The people at most risk are those in developing countries and young children, the elderly, and people who might be immunocompromised. Symptoms range from acute diarrhoea to abdominal pains, right up to mental retardation and failure to thrive in children. There is also increasing evidence that Giardia infections are linked to other disorders like irritable bowel syndrome, chronic fatigue, or even allergies. This really highlights the importance of these parasites and the need to learn more about them. And indeed, the need to have a better strategies to control and treat infections. As many of the drugs we currently use to fight Giardia parasites, including the gold standard 5-nitromidazole, metronidazole, target our own gut microbes and are beginning to fail, our research focuses on improving current treatment options. We assess the ability of compounds to kill parasites in the lab using a novel method that assesses parasite growth using automated microscopy and image assessment. When we find compounds that are potent against parasites, we then examine how these compounds work while ensuring that they don't kill microbes or our own cells. If we identify a promising candidate, we may also begin preclinical trials, examining the compound's activity and safety in in vivo settings. The majority of our work is performed in vitro, culturing GRDA parasites in the laboratory. Fortunately, these parasites are easy to grow in test tubes and in media that reflects the gastrointestinal tract. But we need to keep these test tubes and the culture plates in sealed condition or in gas chamber because these parasites are anaerobic, which means they don't like oxygen at all. When they're ready to perform any experiment, we simply need to count the parasites and dilute them in test plates to do the experiments. We can also change the media condition to trigger the existation or encystation so that we can work on both stages of parasite development. We are currently investigating multiple exciting compounds that have demonstrated potent and selective activity against parasites in the lab and which have also demonstrated promising activity in animals. We hope that these compounds will eventually improve the treatment of geodiasis and reduce the significant morbidity that this parasite causes on a global scale. We also hope that our research will improve our understanding of this very neglected parasite.